I was a dreamer. I've been a dreamer since child. The dreams of my old age now is to see our young people thrive. I wish they could have an education like you guys have. And it wouldn't be so hard for them to make the transition from their home reserve life into the city life. I think it's not only my dream, I think it's a dream of uh, most elders of the Sikh in a nation to see the youth do good. We started with gearing up last year and the idea was the UBC students from Science and Engineering would come to the community and provide some workshops with our kids in the classroom with hands-on science experiments. Last year was hugely successful. We had a conversation afterwards about coming back this year, um, but then also expanding the program and doing a camp out. We've been running a four-day camp with the Seike Dene and Kwadasha First Nations. We're doing science and engineering activities in the outdoors. It's actually really cool where we're taking indigenous knowledge of the land, um, inherent knowledge that kids already have of science and technology within their own communities and gearing up has come in with their knowledge of STEM and aligning the two different types of knowledges so that uh, the kids recognize that they've always had science in their communities, they've always had technology, engineering, mathematics to some degree. It's been really cool to watch the kids really flourish in their own environment. We're learning so much about how to be in their territory and seeing how they can integrate their knowledge of science and engineering into what they see all the time every day is really cool. Culturally, that's where learning has taken place, out in the land, out in the territory. Our big goal is building on language and culture with the kids and getting that program so our kids can pass that down to their kids eventually. You'd be amazed at the difference you see with them in a classroom and in, with four walls versus out here with no walls and under the big blue sky. Yeah, they're just, they're comfortable, they're at home. They're, you see a really different side of them than you do in the classroom. It takes away the whole formality uh, of school and they don't realize they're learning when they're working so hard at things. It's just, it's, it comes natural. Right now, we'll have everyone design and construct their own chairs from things that they can find in the woodlands, and then they're going to be trying to sell those chairs to us at the end of the activity. I think chair building was my favorite activity because we got them to be really creative with what they found, to find natural materials, and with very limited input from us, they came up with really creative designs that I couldn't have come up with. They used the environment around them that they know so well and they used it to build and they used it to engineer in a new way. I'm Haley and I'm 12, 14. I'm Green Brain, 14. Uh, Ariel and I'm 12. I'm Casey and I'm 12 years old. I'm Aiden and I'm in grade 7. Hi Cam, my name's Adriana. My name's Alyssa. We're making chairs out of natural resources. Monty, we're building a chair. We're building boats with foam plates in a uh, blue lake. We made ours in kind of a squared shape and put tin foil inside. I'm gonna run and Out of paper, out of bowls and stuff. And what are we using to power them? Motors, elastic bands. We learn more about our culture and in science out here and we get to do more activities than we could do in a classroom. So they're actually learning and it's authentic learning, they're physically doing it and they realize that they can. The community is very proud of them. They want us, they want a school, they want to, the community at large to, to use the land more in these recreational activities and in a learning environment. Because I mean all the learning before was done on the land and informally, right? So it's really a natural place to, to do this. It'd be great to build the relationships with the university so then it's not as scary to go out. They'll have those connections there. There's, they can go to university. It's not something that's out of reach for them. Some of these kids don't get out very often. They don't see life outside of Karacha or outside of Seike. So 
showing them what's out there, what they can achieve because they don't, they don't realize it, they don't experience it. Continuity is really important so that the kids can see that people actually do care about us. They want us to learn, they're here for us. Having that face is really important so that they know that we're not alone here, we're not in isolation. We're part of BC, we're part of Canada. We can learn the same things as those kids out there. Continuity is, is huge for us. It's something I've, I've learned in my, in my time here. Building relationships with the students, getting to know them on a personal level, they get to know you, right? When the relationship is there, then learning can take place. They're already excited. They're already talking about next year. They want to do this again. I think what your company is doing, gearing up, is a very positive move that you guys are doing among the young people. And I really appreciate you guys coming into our little um, wilderness community, going out of your way to come here, sharing your knowledge and your ideas and your dreams with us as we ourselves with you. So thank you very much for coming to us.